Hey guys, it's Van Diesel, back again for another card fight, Vanguard reveal weekly thing. So I hope you guys enjoy. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and do it to the Patreon. Let's get started. This is my first test with my more or less new background, hoping that the uh, sound that people are bothered by doesn't appear in this. So anyways, this week we got so many reveals and I have had no time to prepare for this, so I am basically going off script of what I normally do. So hopefully this works. So from May 2nd of last week to May 9th of today. Okay, here we go. Skills. I mean cards. Eh. First up we got Alert Guard Gunner for the Brant Gate start deck. Grade 3 with Persona Ride. 13k base. Auto rear guard when this unit attack hits a vanguard. Choose up to two of your opponent's unit rear guards and imprison them in your prison. Put them into your order zone that has a prison on it. So that's really good. It's not a counter blast cost, not a soul blast cost. The only cost is that it has to hit, but if it does hit, you know, you get the free um, imprisonment. And that's actually really good because that gives you a free two, so the Vanguard hits more power and numbers if it doesn't already have the three in bind. I mean, sorry, three in imprison. So that's really helpful to have. Then we've got Platinum Wolf, a grade one in the Cater Sanctuary deck. And AK base, 5k shield, you know, uh, act rear guard circle, soul blast two, and this unit gets plus 5k power. So that's really good. The deck doesn't use a lot of soul. I don't think it uses any soul at all besides this thing, because the only cards I can remember that actually have cost are only counter-blasting cards. Like, unless that last card that is yet to be revealed, which I'm 90% sure is a PG, and if it ain't, it's a grade one, it doesn't cost counter-blast. So the only card in this deck that I think costs soul blast would be Platinum Wolf, so you know. That's a nice ability to get plus 5k off it. You most likely won't call it, it is just a 5k shield after all, but all I have to say is this, it looks really beautiful. This is one of my favorite cards now, like on my top tier list. If I were to just put a straight up gold paladin deck of all my favorite looking cards, this would be in it. Next up we got Automatic Autonomic Caution, another grade 1 for, but for this time for Brant Gate, also from the start deck. Continuous of your guard or guard circle, if one or more of your opponent's cards are imprisoned in your prison, this unit gets plus 2k power and 5k shield. So that's good, because that's a permanent effect. So it becomes a 10k base power, and then a 10k base shield. So that's really helpful. It's always nice to have the 10k, because now that they put the cards back to 5k, I feel like it diminishes the value of grade 1s. Because for most people, or at least for me personally, grade 1s, the main reason why I like them in standard is because of their shield value. Like, yeah, I would call grade 1s, but I would always call grade 1s that are either they have a permanent skill that I can use at any point in time on rear guard, or if they have like a mechanic to bounce themselves back, so I have like the 10k shield. That's why I kind of like Altmile, uh, Phylax, and Selim together, because they can constantly bounce each other, getting more shield. Here, grade 1s are kind of 5k's now, so you have to force out more hand to, you know, survive, which means you get less options to do things with. Thankfully, because of the add of the 5k shield from this ability, you're not having to throw away as many cards. Basically, I like this thing. It fits my style. Unfortunately, it's in Brant Gate, which is not one of my favorite decks. So not because I just don't like it. It's just because... Actually, no, it is just because I don't like it. it I like its mechanic. I just don't like Brant Gate because I just don't like Brant Gate. There's no other reason. But anyways, on to this thing. I had no idea this was getting revealed. No joke, yesterday morning, I have a Discord going where me and my friends, we just share reveals with each other. I had no idea this was coming up. Like, I was waking up early in the morning, checking Discord because I got a notification from it. And this thing and a bunch of other reveals were all next to each other. And I was wondering, when did this happen? <laughs> so, Prominence Glare of the Bluish Flame. So, it's a bluish flame, obviously. And Prominence Glare is... Well, okay, first off, a little backstory on me. I hate bluish flames because, not because of I hate gold paladin, because based off of my name, we can all assume what clan I love the most. That, and I actually love liberators, My because considering my liberators were actually my first gold paladin deck and my first deck in general. But my problem with it was the character that used it, I think his name was Oliver Gallard or something along those lines. And I don't know why, I just hated him with a burning passion. And that's why I basically never wanted to touch a bluish flame card. 
Impento Percival came into standard, and I spammed it against my friend and made him hate Gold Paladins even more than he already did. And now, um, I have access to another blue flame. Prominence Glare of the blue flame, to be exact. And if I'm correct, this thing's name is different than its premium name. So you can run this and the premium version in the same deck. I'm not so sure about that. Uh, but anyways, skill. Auto, when placed on Vant, also has a gift XL-wise and 12k base. When placed on Vant, look at top four. Call up to one card from on them to rear and put the rest at any bottom. Put the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. So that's good. You can basically top deck into a Percival from this and use Percival skill to, you know, check top not check top four, get an Excel gift and call an Aggro Veil. So technically from this on place, you can get two more attacks. I mean, two more rear guards and another Excel gift. So that could be helpful. And then auto Vanguard. When this unit attacks, counter blast one and discard one, perform all the effects below equal to the number of rear guards you called this turn. Three or more, it gets plus 15k in a crit until out of battle. And four or more, your opponent cannot guard with Sentinels for this battle. So that's good. It becomes a 27k double crit attacker. And possibly restricts tentinals. My problem with this, you have to call three or more to do it. Now, with golds, that's never really a problem because golds can pump out a board like there is no fucking tomorrow. But the problem is, golds to do this, or at least all the gold pile index I've experienced, unless you're on Ezel, who I, in my experience, I think Ezel is the only one that can actually call things without paying a cost. Because. Yeah, Ezel is the only one that can do it, because Gurgit cost a counterblast, Percival also cost a counterblast, this cost a counterblast, and it also has to be on Van, which restricts Ezel from being in, in this deck. The only cards that you have, that that would be a big grade 3 possibility, that can call, would be just straight up Ezel and this thing, without a cost, obviously. But, at the same time, you got other units that you could also afford to call, but you still need to keep an open counterblast for it, because, let's see... Wonder Ezel doesn't call anything now. Oh, wait, yes, it does, actually. So if you play it smart with, like, maybe a Mock Slash Counter Blast and calling down a Wonder Ezel and using Wonder Ezel skill to just call down a card, maybe Percival, use Percival skill to Counter Blast, get out Agavale, then, yeah, you can do it, but it's a cost of three Counter Blasts. You gotta make sure when you're using your Counter Blast, you're using them wisely, because to get this off, unless you're just gonna regular call, if you wanna make it flashy, it'll superior call, but if you just wanna... Do it regular, just call regular units. And then to this order. This, in my opinion, is the single worst goddamn order they could have gotten. Yes, I'm aware. This this card is okay. It works with the deck. I hate it for the following line of text. Choose one of your units and it gets plus 5k power to end of battle. I'm aware that it has another line of text that makes it 10 times better. My problem is with this, its first ability is straight up a quick shield. Ow, my throat. <clears throat> its first ability is straight up a quick shield. From this cool looking card, Call of the Beast, the best name, cool looking card that I would honestly shove into a random deck of a bunch of random cards like Platinum Wolf of cool looking things, is a shield card. This is just a personal thing. I don't know why. It bothers me like the quick shield thing. This thing looks like an aggressive card. It has an aggressive sounding name, like something that would be like, play it, call something from deck or from drop. And it would actually work calling from drop based on one of the reveals we got today. But it had to be this. And it's only during the opponent's turn, if I'm correct. Yeah, a blitz order can only be played during the guard step. So yeah, you can only do it when your opponent's attacking you. So fuck. That's why I hate it, but the other ability is if you have three or more back or rear guards, it gets plus 15 instead of 5. Which is both at the same time hard and easy. With the way the deck is supposed to play, the deck that this goes in, the start deck, it's not that hard to get three units in the back row. But the problem is, it's hard to get three useful units in the back row. Follow my logic here, because to get three... Because you want to obviously proc off the ability of... Forgot its name already. Sylvan Horned Beast King, whatever it's called. And you always want to proc off its ability to the best of its ability. So you need at least one unit in the back row to attack with for the first attack. And then when you Persona Ride, you need three. Problem is, there's not a guarantee that you'll get, like, three perfect units in the back row. For all you know, you could just get all triggers and not be able to do anything with it. So I guess that's the sucky part. And for this to actually be useful, 
you have to call three units to the back row. Because that 5k shield does nothing. You have to call three units. And then that's a 15k shield going down the drain right there. That's why I feel like it's bad. It is essentially a quick shield. Slightly better, but at the same time, slightly worse than a quick shield. That's just my opinion on this. And then we got the order for um, Cater Sanctuary. So now we have all the orders. The hour of holy judgment cometh. I'm not the only one disappointed by its ability because a lot of people wanted this to give shield and to be a set order, but I'm pretty sure we're going to get a set order in the booster set, so I'm fine with this. Uh, to use it, you got to pay counter blast 2. You draw 2 and choose one of your units and it gets plus 5k power to end of turn. So I'm actually fine with this one because, to our knowledge, so far, the only card... In fact, there's only one other card besides the Sentinel, I think, to be revealed for Cater Sanctuary in the start deck. So right now, the only card in the start deck besides this that counter blast would be... The grade 3 witch that's on attack, counter boss 1, get plus 5. So this is good because it gives you 2 draw. That's helpful with your whole hand being grade 3s and you not being able to like give those grade 3s guard. Drawing that 2 could be helpful because it can get you your grade 1s. Maybe a trigger. Honestly, I, I would rather have a trigger in hand than a grade 3 even if the trigger has to whiff. And it gives something plus 5 kick power, you know, just making sure that it can hit maybe forcing out an extra 10k if you combine with that witch so all around really helpful i also just like the look of this thing it looks so cool and then we've got this uh shadow bow archer lucina oh is this the other grade one for cater never mind then the, every other thing but the pg for cater got revealed then so this grade one is just straight up a vanilla i'm pretty sure that's what they're all doing they're just gonna get a vanilla at the end so the 5k shield 8k base i am disappointed and i'm probably not the only person who's disappointed that they're that the vanillas are still keeping the 5k shield, it feels like a waste of space. The, the grade ones all have the same stats. 8k power, except for the PGs, obviously. 8k power, 5k shield with a skill. But why do the vanillas not have an extra shield value or an extra power value to benefit off it? Like at the very start of V-Series, they gave us like things like Death Army Guy where they had no shield, but they were 9k base vanillas. And that's good because it gave for extra boosting power, extra swing on van during those early game turns. You know, it was always helpful. This here kind of feels like the opposite of that. So I feel like what they went with the vanillas here kind of got shipped, but I guess they had to have a placeholder. So I guess they gave us this. Uh, this was not needed to be shown, but hey, I'm going to show it anyways. Psychic Prima Miranda. It's basically the Sentinel when put into your guard circle. Discard a card and choose one of your can't be hit on the battle. It is a Dark States card. And the 7k base, so, you know, decent. Oh, just a card in general, actually. And then we've got Steam Gunner Brody. Auto, when this unit is put into Guard Circle, counter boss 1, and this unit gets plus 5k shield, 10k base, and 5k shield. So that means it's going to be a 10k shield, which could be helpful if you pay a counter blast. This is also from Dark States, and that's helpful because Dark States don't really counter blast that much. Or, like, you're mainly going to be on Bruce. And Bruce doesn't counter blast. He only soul blast, and you're easily gonna get the five soul. So, having cards that give you extra guard by counter blasting is always helpful because it's not paying a resource that you're using for your main skill to go off, and you're getting a benefit out of it. So that's why I like this card. So nice, car nice card. Then we've got loading, looting pedal Stomalia, ten k base, five k shield. Act rear guard once per turn, counter blast one and soul blast one, and this unit gets boost and 5k power till end of turn. So 15k base, that is helpful. And you know, it gives, sorry, yeah, it gives itself 15 and it gives it a boost. So you know, you can call this to the back row and you can either use Sylvan Horned Beast King to give this thing back row attack for a 15k attack, or say like it's your first grade three turn, so you obviously haven't had the persona ride yet, you can call it down as a booster so you get more power. So this I actually like because it it makes it easier to have a between like good cards to attack from the back row with and bad cards because, you know, if you call down triggers, you're kind of in a worse situation. If you're calling down this, you're actually gaining shield from, well, you're not losing shield at all, actually, from the 15k thing. So all around, it's really helpful to have just three of these in the back row except for the counter blast and soul blast thing. But otherwise, it's a really good card. And then we got the PGs for all of the start decks. I mean, all the start decks. We got PGs for all of the booster set. So I like this because of the following text. 
Auto, well, first off, Twin Buckler Dragon. This is obviously my favorite one in terms of art because it's the one I put first. 6k base, so they are going down in power, but when this unit is put on Guard Circle, choose one of your units, and it cannot be hit till end of battle. If your hand is two or more, you have to discard, which means if it's one or less, you don't. And that is why I love these. Because that means, say for, if you all remember like Brave Alt Mile, where they had that one PG, I think his name was Regis, I think, where you, when he's placed on guard, uh, Brave, if your Vanguard's an Alt Mile, Soul Charge one, and if your hand is three or less cards or one or less, whatever, one of those numbers, you didn't have to discard. I like that because that makes it so that you can keep that last card in hand and, you know, you can over guard everything else and you can still throw down a PG for the last attack and not have to discard something. And that's all around just really helpful. So now, like, when your, van when your opponent's Vanguard hits really big numbers, you can throw down guards for them and over guard like there's no tomorrow. And even if they do see triggers and put it on the rear guards, you can still just PG it and not have to discard even if the PG is the last card in hand. So that's really helpful. And then here are the arts for the other one. We got Rescue of Hate Dragon for Dark States. Uh, we got Violate Dragon for Brant Gate. We've got Asmagear Dragon for, um, I mean, AG Messier Dragon, probably said that wrong, for Cater. And Prana Prevent Dragon for Stoica. And speaking of Stoica, they got their Grand Blue-ish deck revealed today. And this is the main thing. Prepare to witness Ranker Chain. So AK Base, 5K Shield, Auto Vanguard, I mean, sorry, Act Vanguard Circle once per turn. Soul Blast 1 to draw 2. Choose up to 1 Order card from your hand and discard it. If you did not discard, you pick 2 cards from hand and discard them instead. So that's really good. This is basically a Grand Blue style deck. So, you know, you it just says choose up to an order. You don't have to discard an order. You can just have an order in hand, not discard it, but still discard it for the discard too, and then discard something else just so you can get an extra card and drop. I'm probably the type of person that would do that. But it's really helpful because it gets you a free draw too as well. And continuous rear guard, if you played an order this turn, it gets plus 2k power. So this deck focuses on spamming orders a lot. I mean, even though you can't only use one order per turn, it definitely focuses on actually using out the orders. So getting that plus 2k, even though it's a small boost, it's still a boost nonetheless, and that's something really helpful because it puts it to a 10k base. And then we've got Black Tears Husk Dragon. Husk Dragon. and eh. 10k base, 5k shield. Auto when this unit's placed on rear van. Eh. Choose up to a normal order from your drop and put it to hand. So that's really good. When you combine this with your with this in your ride deck along with this, you can go ride this, soul blast, draw two, and then discard an order. The next turn, ride this and get that order back so you're not really minusing. And then continuous rear guard, if you played an order this turn, it gets plus 5k power. So obviously you need to call these two to the same column. So this is a 15 plus an 10. That's a 25k attack right there, forcing out 15k guards. So that's really helpful just to have because that's either three cards, because there's no such thing as 10k shields anymore. Unless you count like those earlier reveals I said with the where they had the ability to add shield. Because now they'll have to throw out like three 5Ks or a trigger. So that's really helpful to have. And then we have our new grade three, who honestly makes me like Stoica. I hated Stoica before this revealed, and now I love Stoica. Mysterious Rain Spiritualist Zorga. Persona Ride. Grade 3. Twin Drive. 13k base. Awesome ass art. Continuous Vanguard Circle. When you would play a normal order, you may bind a normal order with a different card name from your drop in Alka Magic. Combine the cost and um, use the effect of the back. Uh, and add the effect to the back. And act Vanguard Circle once per turn. Kind of last one, choose a card from drop and call it to rear guard. So there's a lot to unpack from those two skills. So the first one, that means you can play two orders at once. Uh, say, for example, you put... Mm, Oh, uh, wait, no, never mind. You wouldn't be able to do that, would you? I mean, if we if they added the quick shield, let's just say, for example, they added the quick shield back to D standard, we could go quick shield, skill of this thing with the Alka Magic, bind um, the Call of Beast, if you wanted to put Call of Beast in this deck, bind it, and then activate the skills so the Vanguard gets plus 20, or whatever unit's being attacked will get plus 20. And that's just really helpful, because neither of them actually cost anything, so you're just getting a free plus 20 out of it. And then the Carnivore one, that's just a free call. 
there's no downsides to it. I mean, you can call this. You can call this. You can just call something else from drop. You could honestly do whatever with it. I honestly think if you were to combine this with the Stoica starter deck, maybe taking, obviously taking out the cards of the more or less Rye chain with the Silverhorn Beast King and his grade two and his grade one form. If you just swap these out for that, I feel like you would actually do pretty well with this deck, honestly, because it could work by itself. And then the two orders that got revealed with it. Spiritual Body Condescension, so play it for Soul Blasting 1, grade 1 order. Choose a card with a grade less than or equal to to your Vanguard from drop. Call it to rear, and it gets plus 5k power to end of turn. So that's just a free 5k. And it's Soul Blast, so you know, you can say, say if you have one card in drop, you can go, play this order. Soul Blast, I don't know, let's just say this thing. And you call it from drop, and it gets plus 5. Then, you, or you call something else from drop and you get plus five. Then you use Zorga's skill, counter blast, call the thing you just soul blasted from drop, and that gets plus five. So it all around is really helpful. And then the other, um, I don't know why I was about to call it something else. Uh, the other order, play uh, Grief, Despair, and Rejection. Really nice name right there, and just a cool looking art. This, today's just an image of cool looking arts. Honestly, I would take almost all of these cards, shove them in a deck of things that look cool, and use it myself. Play it for a counterblast of one, and if your vanguard is Mysterious Rain Spiritualist Zorga, choose three of your units, and they get plus 10k power to end of turn. So because of how, um, so before I continue with that, let's just go on to how Alchemagic is used. So when it's, if you're not on Zorga, can you still use Alchemagic? No, you cannot, because it's a skill restricted to Zorga. Now, like, if they bring out another grade three later on in the world, where it has Alchemagic as well, then yeah, you can obviously use it when you're not on Zorka. But until that time comes, you gotta be on Zorga. Thankfully, they give us a ride deck, so honestly, it's not gonna be that hard. And then, if, like, you used Alchemagic, will it be regarded as playing an order twice? No, it will not. You can only play an order once. The cost and effect will just be added to it, though. And then, when using Alchemagic, how should the process of binding an order card, paying the cost for the two orders, and the two effects being resolved... How would that happen? So that's actually a question I had as well. Here's how it is. Here's how it happens. So specify the order that you're playing from hand. At the moment you bind a normal order from your drop, and then pay the cost for both the normal order and the normal order. Oh, they have to be normal orders for the effect to go off? Never mind. You can't even use the Blitz order plan. Never mind. Just ignore what I said earlier about the quick shield and the uh, call of the beast things. But anyways, um, buy a normal order from drop, then you pay the cost together and then resolve the effects of the normal order played from hand, then the normal order that was bound. So if you want to use this to like the best of its ability, I would say somehow get this into drop first, then use spiritual body condescension, then use the vanguard skill to bind this, then due to the condescension skill, you'll get to call something, and then due to this thing skill, you'll get plus 10k power to three units. So that's pretty much how I would use that combo. And then finally, the thing that I am the most disappointed about, and a lot of people saw it coming, and I kind of saw it coming too, but I was really hoping when I zoomed into the incline of text that I saw a power symbol that it was a skill, it was not. When revealed as a trigger, choose one of your units and it gets plus one critical until end of turn, choose one of your units and it gets plus 10k power to end of turn. They went through the process of explaining how to use triggers to people who either know how to play the game or when they don't know how to play the game, they put it on the play mats and sometimes the little pamphlets they give you when you buy start decks. Explain to me, why did they do this? Ah! This bothers me so much that they went through the effort of just explaining how triggers are working. And it bothers me so much. But besides this little horror show right here, that was pretty much the reveals for this week. I'm actually pretty happy with these. I got a bunch of new cards that I want to add to my favorite art list. I got a newfound respect for Stoica with this thing. And yeah, and we also got Prominence Glare, the one thing I forgot about. So that was this week's reveals. I hope you guys enjoy. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. My second channel, my Discord, and my Twitch channel are all in the description below. And I'll see you all in the next one. Don't forget to stand up your vanguard.